Welcome back. This is episode 41 of our Let's Play series in Space Engineers, version 1.190.101 still. Uh, so, oops, I did it again. Um, I did more work off camera than I planned to. Um, I did get everything welded up as far as the interior plates are concerned, but I also put in a couch because, you know, it's nice. And I did some work on this wall here around uh, in the front area by where the airlock is going to be. Uh, I also put in an air vent, so we are pressurized. I am not using my suit oxygen right now. I am using the oxygen inside of the space industrial complex. Uh, and in order to be able to do that, I did have to seal off the uh, airlock area. Um, this is how we're going to do the inner section of it, at least I think for now. Um, I do have a conveyor tube running behind this, which is part of the reason for the shape of all this nonsense up here. Uh, I think it ended up looking pretty good. That's my personal opinion. It's, uh, you know, a little bit interesting, mostly symmetrical, except in ways that doesn't really make sense for it to be symmetrical. Um, but yeah, so all that's done. And I said that we were going to do the airlock next episode meaning this episode so we are going to do the actual airlock bit um just not the door not the inner door so yeah if you were barely counting on seeing every bit of that i am very sorry that you did not get to see that but i set up a little button panel here to activate stuff so that button there flips the pressurized depressurized mode on the air vent so it is pulling all of the air out now because i don't want to waste it um once our airlock is in we will not have to do that We'll just be able to open the inner door and make sure that it closes before we open the outer door and it'll be fine. Um, I can activate the door directly or I can use the button, it doesn't matter. Uh, so this is open to space right now. That's our conveyor junction. There's conveyor tube that goes through the wall here and then comes up and goes over here and connects into the conveyor junction that I installed that is above the conveyor junction for the connector that's over there which I will show you from the outward side right now. It's right here. That one's the one that I added. And then, like I said, there's a conveyor tube that runs along here and then down to just above the floor level to about here. And then it comes over and, and plugs in there. Well, this is wall all the way through, so it plugs in here. Um, but yeah, so we need to put an air vent on here, and then we need to do some door-type things on this section. Now, I said I was going to wrap this in armor, and I am going to wrap most of it in armor. But as far as this section here is concerned, this is going to be the longitudinal axis, the, the long way, um, the front and back way uh, of our ship that we're eventually going to create out of this um, when we do build it up to that point. So I'm not going to worry too much about covering this entire face with armor. I am, however going to cover at least this part here with at least some armor because that's where we're going to do the door. We do need to have a, a space here um, so there needs to be the door needs to be one further out at this layer um, but I need steel plates for that. I put everything away. Um, I also uh, welded up the programming block. I don't remember if I placed that in the last episode or not but I said I was going to put it here so it was kind of opposite the the medical rooms terminal. I think that looks kind of symmetrical without actually needing to put in two medical rooms, which would be silly. Uh, I put in two small cargo containers here. There's nothing special in them. There's nothing at all in them now, I don't think, actually. But I guess this is going to be just for stuff in general. Like, after we produce stuff in the, um, the assembler here, I guess, the early assemblers, I guess we can have it go into the small cargo containers since components take up relatively little room. Um, and we'll just use this for ingots and ores and anything we end up with a whole bunch of. Um, and then I attach the air vent to the back here. And I think that that looks about as well as I could make it look that I could think to do. So if you have any ideas on how to make that look better, I'm all ears. But I'm not sure that that's actually possible. We are going to do some more decorating in this area. Um, I am not at all happy with the way this looks. But, you know, there's nothing in here at the moment. So there will be eventually something in here that is... Uh, useful and productive to our purpose of being a space industrial complex and eventually to being a large grid 
kind of mobile station ship thing. Um, meanwhile, though, I need steel plates, and I need to spell it correctly to find them. Just grab a hundred, so we should be able to place everything that we want to place. Alright, so I need a door here, and I'm going to put the door all the way at this end. I need something to put the door on. Do I want to do interior plates here and just do the, the wall sections? At least for the floor. Since it's what it's going to be eventually. I could do. Do I have any interior plates? I have a few. Not very many. It's not going to be enough to actually build any of it, but it will be enough to place it. Rotate it properly. Yeah, that's properly. Right, I'm just going to go along this edge here to there. And then... How much shaping do I really want to put into this? I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot. I'm just going to do... Well, the ones that are straight up blocks. Well, in any case, this is going to be a slope. Like that. This is going to be a corner. that, and then back to slopes, all along here. I'm just keeping this simple. I may decide to fancy it up some at a later point, but today is not that day. And I actually, I think I'm going to change this on the other side over here because I want to cover that conveyor junction. Do you want to do it like that? Let's assume that I want to do this, and then see if there's some way that I can make the inverted corner fit. So we're just going to make it a little longer. Nope, that's not what I want to do. Grind my weld. Alright, so on that same token, grind these two off. Because, you know, symmetry is important. do that just like that. And in these blocks on the sides, yeah, I want those to be armor as well. Because it'll look weird if I break it up differently like that. And then I'm going to put one here. And then I'm going to do another window here. Uh, which I think this one has the fit. I think this one has the dark side facing in. I think I want to maintain that pattern. I need some girders. I need 15 girders. Yeah, 
it would definitely be nice to have some inventory management here. Did you flip these on me again? You did. Okay, so this, this keeps flipping whether it shows me the one that's in cooperative mode or the one that's um, the, the master. It's kind of irritating. But I'm not going to mess with it for now. Alright. Anyway. I want the airlock to have full illumination, so I'm going to put that there. And I actually also want to come out a little bit more, so I don't have that problem again with trying to get lined up with the doorway. Um, Alright, that's weird. Anyway, and then we'll do the slopes again. I'll rotate the entirely wrong direction. And then the door goes here. If I can find the door, there it is. Okay, so there's everything that we need except for one thing, which is the air vent that goes inside here. So we need to put an air vent on this junction, and this is going to stay on depressurized. So any air that gets pumped into that big room will get pumped out of this room if it comes in here. So by the time we come in this door, when we open this door, anything that blows in will get pulled right back out. And by the time we get down here, the idea being it'll be empty. So we can just walk right out and there will be no air in here that gets vented into space. I mean, you can vent air into space and then it'll just replace it with oxygen in the tank. Uh, but eventually the oxygen in the tank will run out and you'll need the ice to replace it. So it's just much more conservative of resources to be pumping the air out of the airlock rather than letting it blow out into space. Because I mean, as long as the door will end up staying opened, it won't get the chance to pump all of the air out into space. Um, so I mean, you can do it that way, but again, it's more efficient to do it this way and I prefer to do the efficient thing. So that's how we're going to do that. Get refilled on stuff here. And then we need 50 bulletproof glass, switch assemblers because it's stupid. And it's going to pawn some of those off, and it ends up pawning most of those off. So yeah, the inventory management is kind of obnoxious with cooperative mode. I'm not sure how happy I am with that. Um, some scripting might be able to make it better. So I will be looking into that, and we will be developing that in a future episode if that's something that we can feasibly do. But not today. don't expect to have enough steel plates to finish all this, but we'll do what we can and then we'll need more. There we go, that's it. I did make a bunch. Because I knew I'd be needing them. I also needed them for the ceiling in here, so... I'll just grab as many as I can. Because then we can finish the at least the bulk of the armor blocks that are out here. Those are walls. These are walls. This is not. This is not. Did I do one on the other side? I did.
All right, so now we need a bunch of interior plates and construction components. Ooh. It's not done yet. It's like that's not venting air, is it? It's not. Um, so I can, nope, I want to keep these. I want to put these. And I need to produce, um, hundreds, not enough. 200 and 100. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright, so if that's what it's going to do, and I did this already, and that's why we ended up in this predicament, is I'm going to flip these around, and then I'm going to flip the names. So that assembler 1 is the one that we use, and assembler 2 is the one that it gets pawned off on. It would be really, really great if it would stay that way. I did reload the game. I don't know if that's what caused it to flip like that, but it's annoying. Whatever caused it. was not a precision operation in terms of how many components I made, so we'll see what we can get done. And how much extra stuff is left over. I was wondering if I wanted to change this out for an armor block, but I don't. This is where our extra bits are going to go. are still going to go in here. See, this is why I need a script, because I'm so OCD, I want to rearrange everything, and I need the script to just do it for me, so I don't have to mess with it. Alright, now the door. Interior plates, steel plates, computers, displays, a bunch of stuff. Whoa. See, now, that's annoying. We need gravity. Interior plates. I think we only needed like eight steel plates. And then we needed displays. Did I use? No, I didn't. I still have some here. I don't need those, but I'm gonna take the those and those because I'm gonna put them away properly. In here. Alright, now what do we still need? We still need small steel tubes, motors, computers, and more construction components. I oh, must have turned the antenna off. Um, which antenna is using less power? Probably the colonizer's antenna. Ten construction components. I don't remember what else we need. I know we don't need 
these are going up. Not until they are bent anyway. Two computers, two motors, and four small steel tubes. Two, two, four. Didn't look like this in a cooperative mode. I did. It's just not doing anything. Oh, space engineers. Oh, I'm not actually at a cargo port. That's why I can't pick anything up. Good reason. I accept. Alright, so that's our door done. Close the door. And then rename the door. Sick outer door, man. Sick door inner, sick door outer. Alright, now we need to finish this thing up. Steel plates, construction components, motors and computers. I'll grab the steel plates first, because I know we have those in here. I don't remember how many exactly. I should have paid more attention to that. That was enough. So, 20, 10, 5. I think that was the 10. I think that's the 5. It has not passed. Oh, it did pass some of the motors off. How thoughtful of you. Okay, so now this is sealed out here. Go ahead and seal this in here as well. So I think this is going to start up turned on. Yeah, so it pressurized that awfully quick. But we actually want this to be, well, first of all, we want it to be airlock SIC. Because I think the other one is SIC air vent main. Yep. Actions. I don't know what these actions do. I'm going to guess that the second one is for when it's done depressurizing. So I'm going to say open. And turn depressurize on. Yeah, that's what it did. That's kind of cool. There's no way to trigger. I have to use a sensor so that when we're out of sensor range, the door closes automatically. Eh, I don't know. I think I just want to keep this and depressurize. And we'll remove this action. That will close this. So this can be pressurized now, but it's not being pressurized. Now if I open this, there and here is turned off. Close this, turn the pressure on. If you watch the bottom left bit, O2 goes up and then the temperature starts to go up along with it. You feel we're waiting that for that to finish. We're up to warm and we're up to high. Alright, so now, can't quite see what's going on in there, but if I open this door, this is still high, 
this is saying full, but I think it's saying it's trying to depressurize, so you can kind of see the little sprite there. And when I close this, it does depressurize. And I can open this, and I'm wasting nothing. So now what we're going to want to do to finish this off as a fully fledged airlock is put a couple of sensors in. Now how do we want to do that? So I think we need a sensor here-ish that will just go over here and one block past the door. So when you step here, it'll open that door. <laughs> and then we also want one here that's just directly in front of this door so that as soon as we step to there, it'll let the door close. And then we step to here, it'll open this door. And there shouldn't be any period where both of these doors are open. Hopefully that'll work. I think that'll work. We can test it. But I need interior plates first to even place these. enough. Take a couple extra of those because I saw that they needed them. So this can't go there because the air vent's in the way. So we'll put it here. And it'll just have to go over a little bit. Alternatively, you could put it right there. I may want to do that because then I have two blocks of extra space here for the door to close. And I know we want one there. So we need 12 detector components altogether. We need 8 radio components altogether. Ten construction components and twelve computers. those things away because we don't need them anymore. And I don't know that it makes a difference that I open and close this. I think it might use more power because there's a max required input here. So as long as this is functioning, I think it's using more power than if it's not functioning. And as long as this door is open, then the main vent is pumping out and this vent is pumping in. So it's going to use more power that way. So I'm, I'm going to close the door manually until we get the sensor set up. That one, I didn't do that. That was silly of me. I just did it on this one. Okay. Um, so this is... Outer. Yes, I see. And... Left extent is 1. Right extent is 1. Bottom extent is 5, that's fine, so that means it's going to reach down this far. Top extent is 1. Back extent is 5, so this is 2.5, so that's going to be one block beyond. That's fine. And the front extent needs to be less, because the front extent is just right where we're standing now. And I think I actually do want it to be a little bit more than 1, because I want to be able to stand 
comfortably in here. I don't want to have to walk right up to the door. So I'm going to make that two. Not floating objects, not small ships, detect nothing really. Not enemy, not neutral. I mean, we're playing by ourselves here, so it doesn't really matter too much about that, but... Detect asteroids, that's interesting. I've never played with sensors before, so this is all new to me. Anyway, uh, set up actions. Door. Outer. So this first one here is when you step into the field, and the second one is when you step out of it. So when we step in, we want to open. When we step out, we want to close. Why are you not activating? Alright, so there's a thing here. Show sensors field range. If we turn this on, then it should show us where it reaches. Oh, it worked that time. So it's only open when we're directly in front of it. I'm a little worried about that closing time. And these are as small as they ha they possibly can be, so I can't like have it a little bit narrower so that when I get to like here it closes. It's only going to close when I get to the next block. So then it's got the length of this block for it to actually close before I hit this block, and this one's going to open. Now I can move the sensors here and here. I don't know how I feel about that exactly, as far as how that will look. I think I'm going to do it though. I'm going to move this one even though I don't really need to because it will look more consistent. I'm going to have to set it up again, but that's fine. Now, is left and right as I'm looking at it, or facing away from it, facing out from it, you know? An antenna turned on, so it should be showing me the sensor field. Yeah. All right, so let's assume that it's looking out from it, so that makes that left, and it means I want this to be. About eight because the blocks are two and a half so this is going to be two and a half there this is going to be 1.25 there so this will go a little bit beyond the, the one block actually so hold on um, to the middle of this one is two and a half to the middle of the next one is five and then another 1.25 after that. So let's just make it 6, actually. So that'll be a little bit short of the edge of the block. At least it should be. Turn that one down. Turn that one down. Turn that one down. Turn that one down. And that one can go down to 2. So it's a little bit inside the block now. Set up actions. 
door, outer door. We enter the field, we open, we exit the field, we close. Alright, I got the right direction. So the sensors left and right is as you're looking out from it. And one meter is the minimum for behind it, so it's still open over here. Even though that's not particularly helpful. But, oh well. And then we want to move this one as well. This is the one that we actually needed to move. And this is the one that we can't reach, apparently. I'll only move the other one for symmetry purposes. But this is the one that I actually wanted to move. So that we didn't... Um, trigger it too soon because if it was here then we'd have to trigger it pretty much as soon as we entered this block and I'm worried that that door wouldn't have been closed yet so if we do it over here I'm more comfortable that the door will be shut and we need to get interior plates and steel plates we need three no four interior and two steel plates close it manually power whatever I don't like counting when I don't have to So now this one, um, again, left extent needs to be about six, because we're doing the same kind of thing. This needs to be SIC sensor airlock, no, inner, airlock. Turn that one down, turn that one down, turn that one down, turn that one down, and turn that one to about two, I think is what I decided I wanted. Yeah, two. Um, let's take care of that real quick. And slam ourselves in the door, luckily that doesn't hurt. Okay, so I'm actually just going to select both of these because we're going to update these bits. Uh, detect players, not floating objects, not small ships, not large ships. No, 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 no. No, no. So the outer airlock is already set up. So we need to set up the inner airlock now. When we enter the field, open the door. We exit the field, close the door. Sweet. Alright, so this is high pressure and warm. I didn't really go fast enough. I feel like we're losing some oxygen as we do that. Nine three six six seven. Three six seven one. There's more. I'm confused. Nine three six seven one. Yeah, we're getting more oxygen somehow. 
I think all the eight O two H two generators are turned off. Off, off, off. And yet somehow and I mean you can see that too because you know, just standing here, this is not going up any. It's not changing, except when we go in and out through the door. So somehow we're magicking some oxygen to existence. But whatever. In any case, we can take our helmet off inside, because we have oxygen. And we have a nice little airlock here, fully automated, without even bothering with using some scripting. So, like, you know, if you are bored of all the scripting stuff I'm doing. I, I did some automatic stuff that doesn't have anything to do with scripting. It's all sensors. Just need to be careful. But, well, you don't even need to be that careful because when you open that, that's still pressurized. This is still pressurized. We're st oh, nope, it's not safe because as soon as we close the door, as soon as that door closes, it pulls all the air out. So that, that's not entirely safe. But we can walk near this door. Like if we go too close to the door and it opens, like, okay, that's that's not a big deal because it's just going to waste a little bit of power as it cycles the air through. It's, you know, keeping the air conditioning going, keep making sure the air doesn't get stale in here, you know, if you put it through the, the purifier, so, you know, if somebody farts in, inside the <laughs> the room, uh, the air gets cycled through and it uh, goes through the purifier. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's the airlock done. Um, that was my goal for this episode. I don't know how long I've been running because uh, naturally I didn't start my clock again. Um, just for fun, I'm going to finish decorating this little room. Uh, I did the couch. I'm going to do a planter because it's pretty. We need interior plates, 20 construction components, 8 and 8. And I need like four more of these. Yeah, four more of those. Cool, I got it right. Can't clean up after yourself, assemblage. Really? <laughs> Gotta leave little bits of ingots sitting around in the assembler. Oh, isn't it nice? I'll probably have to find something to put over here too so that it looks more even. Although I am going to put some LCD panels up in here, especially once we get the programming block up and running and doing useful things. Uh, there's going to be LCDs that'll show us state of cargo and power and other interesting information um, also in here I think that's what a lot of this space is going to be occupied with but thank you very much for watching subscribe to see how that goes I think we are going to do some scripting again next time um, I think the focus will be what well I think the focus is actually going to be on the the mega miner because there's a scripting block on there and it is legitimately inconvenient to have to go through the startup and shutdown process with the drills um, manually even using the hotbar so I'm gonna set up a, an automated system to do that that's gonna be our, our next task is uh, scripting the mega miner so tune in next time for that subscribe to make sure you catch it and don't miss it likes comments and verbal abuse are welcome and we'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Bye.